I'd like you to take the Word of God, please, and turn with me in your Bible to the Gospel according to Luke. We're going to read one verse from Luke chapter 1. One verse from Luke chapter 1. And ask God to guide us and help us to understand what is given here. In the first chapter of Luke, in the conversation, I think I'll just use this, okay? In the conversation <laughs> that the angel is having with Mary, God reveals many things to us. And in the 38th verse, the Bible says, And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary announced herself. God said she was chosen. She was highly favored. But she said, I am the Lord's handmaid. In other words, I'm waiting to do whatever God wants me to do at his bidding. When, where, whatever. That's quite a statement considering what she just heard. That she was the chosen vessel through which God would bring his son into the world. We estimate in the time of Christ there was about 125 million people on earth. At least that's what I read. And God had prepared one woman to be the vehicle, the instrument that he would use to bring the Savior into the world. And in one sense, she responds to God as the angel speaks to her and she says, I am your handmaid. Whatever it is you have for my life, I'm willing to do it. And she somewhat summarized all of that in this statement. And I want you to mark it, if you would, please, in your Bible, if you're in the habit of doing that. Be it unto me according to thy word. Be it unto me according to thy word. In other words, I will give my life to do whatever God says. I'll go through with the Lord. His way is my way. Whatever he wants is what I want. When I think of my own life, this is going to strike you as somewhat strange. Most often I see myself as a boy. Interesting. I say that to Evelyn from time to time and it puzzles her. But I surrendered my life to God when I was 17 years old. I said, Lord, whatever you want, wherever you want it, whenever you want it, I'm yours to do with as you please. And that marked a place and time, an event, a state of mind, a condition of heart in my life that I've never gotten away from. It's like that's when that happened to me. Some people would say, and they'd leave information with a certain age saying, when I was, and they'd name the age, that's when I had this happen to me, or that's when I experienced this. 17 years old, a student at Everett High School, God dealt with my heart, and I surrendered my life to the Lord. Now, there's been a deeper surrender, a further surrender. But forever that is fixed in my mind. And when I see, for example, these young people singing and these young men dressed, I remember when I tried to find the first suit of clothes I ever had. My mother helped me get that when I was about 14, 15 years old. But then when Evelyn and I uh, were sweethearts, <laughs> I wanted to get dressed up but I'd been wanting to get dressed up to go to church. All of those kinds of things happened in my life when I was 17 years old. All of them. I just set my heart toward this very expression. Be it unto me according to God's word. That doesn't mean by, by any stretch of the imagination that I've been perfect or done everything right. But my life has belonged to God, not to me but to God since I was 17 years old. 
Some people have the idea when you're going to serve the Lord or do something for God or God's going to do something with you, and there's a, there's a balance between human will and divine choice, and there's a harmony be, between that also. But some people got the idea, get the idea, imagine somewhere or another that there's a checklist of things that we're to do. Maybe there's a hundred things we have to do to qualify. Maybe a thousand things over a lifetime or whatever to qualify, and then God will finally use you. <laughs> and so they get the idea, if I do this and this and this and this, and that is especially prevalent around, in, around institutions, around schools and places where there are standards and all that kind of thing. If we cross every T and dot every I in the proper place, then God's going to do something with us. Nothing could be further from the truth. Nothing. Nothing. It is not doing all these many things and then God does something with you. It is doing one thing and only one thing. Always that one thing all of your life. And a hundred, a thousand, tens of thousands of other things will follow. If you just do that one thing, what is it? It is this one thing. Be it unto me according to thy word. In other words, your word is going to be over my life. Whatever you want is going to govern and rule my life. Whatever your choice is overrules all my choices. Mary had that in her heart. She publicly stated that to Gabriel. But God saw in her heart. That was what the Lord saw and blessed and used. And, you know, as a pastor of this church, as the shepherd of this flock, watching young people and older people, and by the way, a church should have both old and young actively involved. No doubt about it. All of us make up the body. But we must constantly live to do that one thing, be it unto me, according to thy word, and everything else, everything else, God will give in his good time. No doubt about it. So don't make it complicated. Keep it simple. Let's pray together, may we?